Hi people and welcome to day five. Imagine you made it this far. Ebu imagine we started day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, and now you're here. And I hope your prayer and fasting is coming up on well and I hope you're enjoying. Hata kama ujeza ku fast na umeza kupata time ya kuomba is still okay, but nita ku challenge week two. Try ata kuta fast breakfast, ukule break ukule lunch. I love a week three, try and, you know, breakfast and lunch and eat only dinner and see how that is going. Like, let's grow together. I mean, do it well. All of us are doing it so that you can know we are many praying and fasting together. So we started off with adoration, confession, thanksgiving, the presence of God. I am with you. And today we'll be talking about confidence in the certainty of God. I want to connect this more with the last two expositions that we've had, the presence of God, I am with you, and now having confidence in God because of those two, the presence, his presence, and him being with us, and his assurance, and how then do we move forward with confidence in him. And I will just jump into the scriptures and do this exposition together. So get your Bible, if you can, just listen in. And let's move to Numbers, Numbers chapter 13. The Lord said to Moses, send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. From each ancestral tribe, send one of its leaders. So as the Lord's command, command Moses, Moses sent them out from the desert of Paran, all of them were leaders of the Israelites. These are their names. So I want to read their names. I'll jump all the way to verse 17. When Moses sent them to explore Canaan, he said, Go up through the, ne the Negev and into the hill country. See what the Lord is like. See what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak, few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? Um, what kind of towns do they live in? Are they unwalled or fortified? How is the soil? Is it fertile or poor? Are there trees on it or not? Do your best to bring back some of the fruits on the, of the land. It was the season for the first ripe grapes. Verse, 20, verse 21. So they went up and explored the land from the desert of Zin as far as Rehob towards Lebo. Hamath. So they went and explored the whole land. I will jump into verse 23. When they reached the valley of Eskol, they cut off a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes. Two of them carried um, it on a pole between them, along with some pomegranates and figs. That place was called the valley of Eskol because of the cluster of grapes the Israelites cut off there. At the end of 40 days, they returned from exploring exploring the land. It's interesting. You can actually see the coincidence of 40 days with Moses in the, in the wilderness, you know, at Mount Sinai, with Jesus, 40 days of prayer and fasting, and as who are doing 21. Anyway, the coincidence of 40 days, uh, we go to verse 26. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses an account. We went into the land to which you sent us and does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, you know, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. That means they saw the descendants of giants, you know, Anak look looks like giants. The Amalekites live in it. Oh, allow me to jump into verse 30. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. Then they spread um, among the Israel a bad report about the land they had explored. They said the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak from the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers 
in our own eyes. And we looked the same to them. So we see um, a report. And we can actually see that they, they were sent. And we can read. And I know we have had these scriptures before. Um, but I want us to focus and to maybe to just get a little bit deeper in the verse that says, Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up there and take possession of the land for we can certainly do it. We have talked about the presence of God and how he will, he, and you remember these are the same people. Uh, so now Moses had died and now we are having Joshua and Aaron leading. So, um, Sorry, we still have Moses and Aaron. And remember, Moses was the one given this promise. My presence will go with you, and I will lead you into rest. And these same, same people are here. They have always been reminded of the presence of God. But at this particular time, we have some of them who refuse to believe in what the Lord promised when they were living in the first place. So we look at Caleb and how he was able to just, you know, have confidence and to go against what was believed in and what, uh, uh, what the other 10 gave as, as a famous talk. You, rem you know, when people come and tell you, you know what, you cannot do it. <laughs> you know what, that business, it just can't happen. And imagine it's the same thing that these 10 men were spreading. And they were saying, we cannot take that land. First of all, it is big. They have powerful cities. They are fortified. And they cannot, we cannot do it. But then, Caleb stands and says, we should go up. Take possession of that land. We can certainly do it. And we're talking about the confidence. Talking about the presence of God I am with you. And now, us challenging ourselves to have that confidence in him. For he's already told us that he will be with us. Knowing the presence of God is with us, it leads us to have confidence in him. It makes us to be certain about things even if nothing is signaling us towards that. And it causes us to go against the unbelief that has been given by other people. So you see here, we have these 10 who spread the most famous information that we cannot do it. But again, we see these two standing and saying, you know what, let us go. Let us take possession. Let us do it because you can certainly do it. Now, the word certainly do it, it is derived from um, an at most you know, the utmost belief in God and in his word and standing on his promises. Utmost belief in God, in his word, and standing on his promises. Then when he says, let us go up, means they take the action. They go and actual, actually do what God told them to do. Occupy that land because as we can see through the faith of Caleb, they, he had already believed and stood on the promises of God on what he had already mentioned and said. And that is what we are learning today. Confidence and being certain in the Lord God, in his promises, in his word. So today, we are looking and, you know, it's a flashback of what has happened in the last year. But again, and an, an you know, an overshadow of what is to come. As you think about this year, what is it that probably you feel you've been wanting to start, you've been unable. You've been wanting to do it, you can't. Things that you have always said, you know, I will stand up, I will go, I will do, I will start, I will study, I will, you know. The things that we have always challenged ourselves to do, but we feel we cannot do them. But from this word we are saying, and from this exposition, you're saying certain, being certain and being confident in the presence of God. And we can see the, the challenge, uh, or rather, see um, 
verse 28 and verse 30, if you place those, uh, those verses together, you will see the contrast of the 10 who said these people were and Caleb and Joshua who said, but we can. Let's do it. And that's some of the things that we can place in contrast of things that you feel I cannot and what the word is telling us, we can. We can actually do it. And we are not doing it because we believe in ourselves. Whereas that is important. We are doing it more because we believe in God. We have confidence with God. We are certain about him. At most believe in God and standing on the promises of God. And if he has promised us, as we read the day yesterday and the day before yesterday, his presence and I am with you, we are confident that his presence is with us. Therefore, we can take every moment, we can take every chance, we can actually challenge ourselves to do greater things. We can, just as the Lord has promised us, we can be able to do and challenge what is being seen by the faith of what is unseen. Like these giants are the things we could, they could see. They're the things, the giants that they had placed. But Caleb and Joshua challenged them to be certain in, the, in faith to God of the things that they were promised. They are yet to see them, but they were promised. Yet they have been given a good report. Yes, it's a land of milk and honey and all that, and it's good. The fruits here they are, but what is there is very difficult. But then here we are saying that we challenge ourselves to have that confidence and to have that belief in God because we are standing in his promises. And for that, at this moment, you're going to, you know, pray that we will be able, you know, with that certainty, have confidence to stand up, take possession, because we can certainly do it. And you know what? Anytime you're thinking about this for this coming uh, 10, 12, 11, 11 months, now that the month of January will be coming to an end, the things that you're trusting God to begin, we are praying that you'll have this confidence of Caleb and Joshua. Stand up. Take possession. You can certainly do it. Why? We are standing on the promises of God. He has promised us his presence. He has promised to be with us, to strengthen us, to help us, and to uphold us. So there is nothing to fear when we stand on the promises of God. So join us as we pray at this moment and as you reflect on the coming year and what you want to do and trust the Lord to do this in his presence. Our Lord and our Father, we thank you. Indeed, God, there is nothing we would want apart from the presence of God. All other things, yes, they are good. And whereas they are, they are important, we believe, we know that your presence is much more important. And like Moses said and like we prayed, we don't want to do anything unless you are with us. And thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see the people and the men of faith whom you were with in those days and they kept their promise uh, and you know and they kept their trust in you they kept believing in you they kept calling in you on you and we thank you that you always showed yourself faithful you always showed yourself present and Father, Lord, we want to trust and we want to believe like Joshua and Caleb that God would want to take every single step with confidence at most believe, standing on the promises of God. And we want to say like Joshua and Caleb, we will stand up, we we'll take possession and we will certainly do it. Why? Because God, we are standing in your presence. So teach us God to gain this confidence in you. Teach us, God, to gain this at most belief in you. Help us, God, as you told us yesterday, strengthen us, God. Uphold us with your righteous hand. Teach us, Lord, to be confident, to go beyond what we believe, that we may be confident so, so well in you, O oh God, that we'll be able to do this 
and do this year and, and, and challenge ourselves to begin and to do a lot of things because we have confidence in you. We thank you, O oh Lord. And as we go forth to this weekend, as we do this um, worship day on Saturday and rest day on Sunday, Lord, we pray that you will experience your joy, your calmness, your stillness, your presence, oh God, and that Father will have the rest from you, oh Father. And as we look forward to continue with our prayer and fasting coming week, Lord, we pray that you will strengthen us, you will prepare us, Lord, you will join us, you will allow us, Father, to experience the presence of God in your presence and in the presence of one another. So we trust and we walk with you, Lord, and we desire to always have confidence in you. We thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. That's it for week one. And I hope you have enjoyed, you have had a good time with the Lord. And if you haven't joined us, please join us uh, coming even week as we continue with prayer and fasting. So for tomorrow, we'll have a worship session. So we'll just... Um, what we'll send is that uh, people will have time to just worship the Lord, reflect on what we have learned this week, challenge yourself, study, you know, take time aside from your normal schedule, pray, seek, knock, and the door shall be open. And as on Sunday, we'll have rest day, so that means uh, you can have, you know, you can, you, can, you can choose to either fast or just rest, and then we will embark on prayer and fasting on Monday. So if you haven't joined us, please join us. You have one, we have two more weeks, and you will be together in this journey. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord refresh you and replenish you and nourish you and that will come out of this looking brighter, you know? Like people who have met the Lord like Moses did. Our face will shine, you know? If you think about it, literally we will shine because we'll be from the presence of the Lord. And as we continue con uh, staying and dwelling in the presence of the Lord. The Lord bless you. Have a good weekend and may the Lord keep you. Amen. Give us ears to hear that still small voice and give us lips for Great.